Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A warm welcome to everybody this morning as we gather. A few announcements to draw your attention. First of all, a big thank you to Kate Blair for being our musician this morning. Yay! Yay! God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. We're grateful for that chance. Today also, a shout out to St. Thomas uh, Lutheran Church in Perengpatai, India, a part of the Arcot Lutheran Church. They visited our congregation last Friday as a part of their coming for the installation of Bishop Stacy. And I pulled out the uh, stole that they made when Cheryl Andreasen went there and brought it back for us. So I wore it and took some pictures with the bishop. And shout out to Joanne Johnson for stitching uh, the name of the church uh, and the town in India. Uh, as we remembered um, Cheryl bringing it and the Arcot Lutheran Church this morning and the Church of St. Thomas in Parangbatai. So we're grateful for uh, their ministry. Today, as we gather, know that this past week, the Rockford Area Lutheran Ministries daily devotions were shared by the pastor and intern of Zion Lutheran Church. And so if you don't know, you can listen to those daily. Just hit like or subscribe to the uh, Facebook page or website of Rockford Area Lutheran Ministries, and somebody in the Northern Illinois Synod of the North Conference uh, will share the daily devotional reading in Scripture for each day. You're welcome to note that. And our boiler is saying good morning. Say good morning, boiler. Good morning, boiler. That's a beautiful... Uh, good morning to you as well, yeah. Oh, what was that? Oh, right, yeah. I re whenever I hear that, I think of Chuck Wallen. Shout out to Tony... Chuck would always come up when he was ill, and he was always cold, even if it was warm, and he'd walk up and, it's cold in here, Pastor. So I remember that sound, because Chuck would walk. We remember the saints, and we're grateful for the saints of uh, here who start the boiler. So a shout out to Torg. Uh, it's a generational thing for Torg. His, I think his father did the boilers in Sweden, if I remember. His grandfather? Grandfather. So it's a beautiful thing as we think about how warm it is in here, and we're grateful for Torg helping us make sure the heat is on. Today is the Crop Walk. If you'd like to donate to the Crop Walk, you can do that with your envelopes, mark Crop Walk, or you can go on the internet and uh, make that donation through our website as well. If you'd like to donate toward trick-or-treating, there are two events coming up. Patriots is doing one on October 31st. Uh, and you want to come and help, we're handing out candy there. If you'd like to make donations of candy for October 27th, um, Zion Lutheran Church is having a canopy in the parking lot at RPS because the police department do a, a big trick-or-treating around the school building. And so the church is going to have a booth, and we have a few volunteers already. And Cars and Coffee is going to have a booth, and Katie's Cup will be open that night. So this park, the police department hosts the trick-or-treating and... They say over a 1,000 kids come, and we're usually around there as well. So please join us if you'd like to either donate or hand out some candy. As we gather, also know that if you'd like to share a name for a saint for All Saints Day, and those names are written are read out loud, you're welcome to put on the prayer card and put in the offering the name, just write All Saints Day, and then the names, and we'll be collecting those names. You can also email those names to the office, and we will, during the service of All Saints Day, share the names of all those you have listed down that day. All Saints Day, November 1st, is an All Saints Day banquet. So all congregational members and friends can join us at Lino's, hosted by Men's Ministry. And, and hear the infamous Pastor Jerry Peterson share uh, as we gather with him on November 1st, so you're welcome to join. The bulletin said men's dinner, but it is for all members of the church and friends. And then November 4th is the Realm Trivia Night at Our Savior's Lutheran Church. If you're interested, please uh, register with Rockford Area Lutheran Ministries. And then finally, as we gather at the font and we gather for worship this morning, uh, hey, there's Torg. Everybody say, thanks, Torg. You warm our souls and our feet. And as we gather this morning, so we invite you to keep in your prayers the family of Charmaine Logwood, 
who died last Sunday. Uh, please pray for her, her daughter Monica and Kenny, her brother, and Mike, uh, the other brother in Texas, as we gather tomorrow at 9.30 for a visitation here and 11 o'clock for the service. And then following the graveside internment, we come back here for a meal. So please join us if you're able. And please keep in your prayers Monica and her family. We gather at the font, we're reminded in the gospel today by Jesus not to lose heart. So let us stand as we come before the Lord. We gather with the saints who have gone on before us who are among us and the saints after us. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend, amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that Thou art. Thou my best thought by day and by night, waking or sleeping, Thy presence, my light. Be thou my wisdom, and thou my true word. I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. Thou my soul shelter, and thou my high tower. Raise thou me heavenward, O power of thy power. Riches I heed not, nor vain empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and Thou only, the first in my heart. Great God of heaven, my treasure Thou art. Rear my soul after victory won. May I reach heaven joys, O oh, heaven's son, heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O oh, ruler of all. Yeah. 
heaven's joys, O oh, heaven's sun, heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be our vision, O oh, ruler of all. The Lord be with you. O Lord God, tireless guardian of your people, you all are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all the suffering world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we receive our offerings, offerings of music and the offering box is in the back on the pulpit side by the pole. Our first reading this morning comes from Genesis, the 32nd chapter. The same night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. 
But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Word of God. We'll read responsively Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. Our second reading comes from 2 Timothy, the third chapter, and into the fourth. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. Word of God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. Jesus said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and, and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to the chosen ones who cry day and night? Will God delay long in helping them? 
I tell you, God will quickly grant justice to them. And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. In 2013, Tony Williams, son of lawyer Edward Williams, recounted a story about his father from the early 80s. Edward Williams represented as a lawyer the mob, Jimmy Hoffa, and others. But he was also a part of the Knights of Malta, a Catholic charity. He was the president of it at one time. And so in the 1980s, he got a phone call from Mother Teresa who wanted to visit with him. He was gracious and allowed her to come and visit his office in New York. She arrived, needed a few million dollars, she said, for her ministries and explained the need, knowing that he was a part of a Catholic charity. He was impressed, but all the money had been earmarked, he said, for the next few years already. She said, can we pray? He put his hand in hers, they said a prayer, and after the prayer was over, she then began to share her pitch for money again, using the same words. And he gently had to say, sorry, there, there's no funds right now. She said, let us pray. She took his hand, said the same prayer, and after the prayer, this time, Mr. Williams said, uh, I, I think I can find the money for you, I'll be right back. And he went and got his checkbook. Mother Teresa seemed to never lose heart, doing all that she did for those in India and the world. In 1979, she received the Nobel Peace Prize. But just three months before that, she wrote in a, spirit, a letter to a spiritual confidant, the Reverend Michael Van Der Piet, which was made public just in 2007, 10 years after she had died, this letter she wrote just three months before receiving the Nobel Peace Prize. Jesus has a special love for you, she assured Vanderpeet. But as for me, the silence and the emptiness is so great that I look and I do not see. I listen and I do not hear. The tongue moves in prayer, but it does not speak. I want you to pray for me, that I let God have a free hand. God knows that all of us lose heart. Something happens, the circumstances of our lives individually, communally, nationally, globally, and it's easy to grow faint. It's hard to imagine the words of Isaiah when he says, you will walk and not be faint. And that's what happens in the gospel lesson. Jesus knows here near the end of his life, because by the end of this chapter, they will be going to Jerusalem, that the disciples will lose heart. The word is ekakeo, which means to faint, to pass out, to be exhausted, to be utterly spiritless, wearied, and worn. They are almost there to Jerusalem. And Jesus is telling them, do not lose heart. And then he tells a parable about this persistent widow who keeps asking a judge for deliverance from her adversary. And this word adversary is only used four other times in scripture. It's almost always legal and the only other one that isn't about a courtroom is about the devil, the adversary from 1 Peter 5, who is like a roaring lion seeking to devour. Jesus is telling them that this woman is going to the courtroom, to the judge, and pleading her case before an unjust judge, somebody who doesn't really care about this woman. It's like a joke. Did you hear that one about the widow and the judge? The woman had no rights. She's vulnerable. She doesn't get to have her own voice, perhaps, in court. 
Perhaps her husband has died, there's no children, and somebody else gets to determine her property rights because she cannot be the executor of her own estate, which just changed in this century. Others are making her decisions. Others are perhaps swindling, bribing the judge, doing what they want and not what she wants. But she keeps asking the judge for mercy. She doesn't give up. Don't give up. Rely on God. This passage isn't about self-reliance, about you can do it. It's about knowing that desperation calls us and drives us to our knees. Jesus is telling them to keep asking God for help. Don't give up in your asking. This wrestling in this relationship is exemplified in our first lesson as we hear the story about Jacob facing his day in court. It's the Genesis story about having to face his brother who's going to finally meet up with him. You know, the older brother, the twin that was born to Isaac and Rebekah. Jacob swindled out his brother's birthright. He did that with his mother's help. And now he is facing his accuser. Twenty years of bad blood between them. And they are finally reuniting. He knows he's guilty. He's divided his herd in half. He sent his wives forward. He's hoping that he won't kill these people. He's wrestling now in the middle of the night with God. And in the morning, God is more to be feared than his brother. It doesn't seem fair that God is generous to Jacob. He swindled out this blessing and God doesn't make him pay for it? You look at this family history, you know, Our family histories, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Isaac and Ishmael, Jacob and Esau, and then Jacob's children, Joseph, and the brothers, and don't even go with go, 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 Joseph. And here, Jacob's name is changed by the end of this wrestling, this demanding to be blessed, and it's changed to Israel, which means one who wrestles with God. We gather, my friends, in worship and in community because we do lose heart. We do wrestle with how things are allowed to take place. We may think that God is not just, God isn't hearing, and we cry out again and again like the widow who is just, can I call her a nag? Can I say she's whining? Perhaps God knows what this is like. Perhaps God, a seminary classmate of mine, Sally Wilson, said, perhaps God is this feisty old bag. Perhaps the one who has given birth to all of creation, who has seen the universe swirl out of the womb of creation. Perhaps she is willing to take on the powers that be, that demand justice. And perhaps she stands at the judgment seat, turning things around in the courtroom of unfair decisions and overturning rulings. She's seen a long line of people who don't deserve mercy. And she waits. It seems like an eternity. And she waits but her her clothes will be torn off her body. They will laugh at her. They will give her a tiara crown, and she will be crucified. This feisty woman is the one who gives justice. She is the one who will turn things upside down. She is the one who will grant us pardon. Sins and grief. 
Let us confess our faith in God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. God, we pray for all the baptized, that they become skilled in compassion and grace and equipped to share the good news with all. Grant your followers persistence in proclamation and in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Creator, we pray for air and sky, clouds and sun, that they provide rain to parched land and relief to flooded ground. Renew and restore our atmosphere and empower us to be worthy stewards of creation. Lord, in your mercy. God of justice, we pray for judges, juries, and all who work in the judicial system, that they desire wisdom, seek truth, rule with fairness, and have the to do what is right. Eliminate oppression and injustice in our criminal justice system. Lord, in your mercy. Shepherding God, we pray for those who are lonely, those who have newly arrived in an unfamiliar city or country, political prisoners without recourse to justice, hospital patients without visitors, and all who are ill or grief-stricken. We pray especially for those named in our bulletin today in need of healing, 
and those we name now out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Word of life, we pray for those in our community who are engaged in advocacy work and for all of our ministry partners. With the persistence of the widow, may they lift their voices in seeking justice on behalf of others. Lord, in your mercy. God of resurrection, we pray for the families of those who have taught us faith and those who now rest in your heavenly peace, especially Charmaine Logwood and Tim Pat. We remember and give thanks for these saints who shared the gospel through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share signs of peace. be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Gave it to the disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me, the body of Christ broken for you. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen.
Please stand as we sing our sending hymn, Go My Children. Go, my children, with my blessing never alone. Waking, sleeping, I am with you. You are my own. In my love's baptismal river, I have made you mine forever go my children with my blessing you are my own go my children sins forgiven at peace and pure here you learned how much I love you what I can cure. Hear you heard my dear son's story. Hear you touched him, saw his glory. Go, my children, sins forgiven, at peace and pure. Go, my children, fed and nourished, closer to me. Grow in love and love by serving, joyful and free. Hear my spirit's power filled you. Hear my tender comfort still do you go, my children, fed and nourished, joyful and free. Go in peace, serve the Lord, and go downstairs to have some coffee and donuts. <laughs> <laughs>